Valve's Fremont just showed up on Geekbench for the first time. This was noticed originally by Sadly It's Bradley over on Twitter. He has a YouTube channel that's really big into VR stuff and he regularly leaks information that him and the people he's associated with his Discord data mine from public information. Well, he recently found out that Fremont was tested on Geekbench and the hardware is pretty interesting. Fremont features an AMD CPU 1772, which is part of the quote, authentic AMD Family 25 Model 124 Stepping Zero. According to WCCF Tech, this is related to AMD's Hawk.2 or their Gorgon Point series. The SOC for Fremont has six cores and 12 threads, and according to analysts, it should be based on Zen 4 architecture and it'll have a four nanometer node process. It'll also have a 16 megabyte L3 cache as well as a six megabyte L2 cache and runs at 3.2 gigahertz, but it can boost up to 4792 megahertz if needed. Finally, it also has an FP7 socket. So how does this compare to the Steam Deck OLED? Well, Fremont will have six Zen 4 cores versus the Steam Deck OLED's four Zen 2 cores. Fremont will have 12 CPU threads versus the Steam Deck OLED's eight CPU threads. Fremont's base clock speed will be 3.2 gigahertz. The Steam Deck runs at 2.8 gigahertz. A Fremont can boost up to 4.8 gigahertz, while the Steam Deck can only boost up to 3.5 gigahertz. Again, I'm talking about the OLED model. Fremont will have a 16 megabyte L3 cache compared to the Steam Deck's four megabyte, um, did I say gigabyte? I meant megabyte, four gigabytes, me megabytes for crying out loud. Fremont will have six megabyte L2 cache compared to the Steam Deck's two megabytes of cache. And finally, Fremont will apparently have an RX 7600 RDNA 3 GPU, while the Steam Deck has an eight compute unit RDNA 2 GPU. Now, according to WCCF Tech, AMD doesn't use the RX 7000 series in any integrated solutions, meaning where it's all built into the system. So it's likely that this is going to be a separate dedicated graphics card, which means it's going to have its own memory instead of sharing the memory between the CPU and the GPU like the Steam Deck does on, the, on its AP. APU. This makes a lot of sense because Fremont only has eight gigs of RAM. When I first looked at that, I was like, holy cow, I was really alarmed. But because this is a discrete GPU, there's no more sharing between the two and eight gigs of general RAM is okay. They also say it could have anywhere from 28 to 32 compute units, which is a great deal more than the eight compute units that the Steam Deck has. This is a pretty beefy upgrade over the Steam Deck. In fact, I set them to compare, I uh, set them up to compare over at geekbench.com, and we can see that Fremont, which is shown here in blue, has a single core score of 2412 compared to the Steam Deck OLED, which has a score of 1113. This is more than two times better than the OLED Steam Deck. The multi-core score is 7451 versus the Steam Deck OLED's 4159. Not quite as big of a jump as the CPU, but 1.8 times more powerful. I recently built my own Steam machine. I call it the Steam Box, running Bazite. There's a video linked down below that like button if, there's, if you want to check that out and find out more about it. But this made me curious, how would my Steam Box stack up against Fremont? So I installed Geekbench. I was going to do a tutorial at this point in the video to show you how to install Geekbench, but it's dead simple, so there's no reason for that. I've linked to the website if you want to install it on your machine on Windows down below. Uh, and if you're on Linux like me, you could just find it in the App Store. I will say that I did run into an issue as soon as the benchmark was finished, the window would just disappear before I could actually see the results. So I reached out to the people that are in my free Discord channel, link below by the way, and the ROM 3 told me how to fix this. Instead of just starting the program by clicking on the icon like you normally would, instead launch your terminal, usually it's called console with a K I think on Linux, and then you want to input the command that's on the screen right now. Then it'll go through and run the benchmark again, exactly as it did before, but this time the window won't close. And you can right click the URL at the end and open it up. Now, if you make a free Geekbench browser account, you can add that to your benches and then you can make comparisons. 
Now before we saw that Fremont gets about a 2x score over the Steam Deck OLED, but how does my system compare to the Fremont system? Well in blue, here you can see my Steam Box, and in gray, you can see Valve's Fremont. Fremont has a single core score of 2412, and my Steam Box has a score of 3319. This is a 37% increase in power over Fremont. For multi-core, I'm getting nearly two times increase over Fremont, which had a score of 7451, while mine had a score of 14,604. Just to give you a reference as to how this system stacks up, um, I've got Cyberpunk 2077 running on my Steam box set to 1440p in the graphics tab. I have FSR 3 turned on, however, I have frame generation turned off and texture quality set to high. For ray tracing, I have that turned on along with ray trace reflections, sun, shadows, local shadows, and ray trace lighting set to medium. I do not have path tracing turned on because anytime I do, I completely tanks the frame rate. I've got crowd density set to high and all of the rest of the settings are as high as they can go with the exception of screen space reflection qualities, which is set to ultra. And I typically get FPS or frames per second over 70 with a, a relatively steady frame time graph. On the Steam Deck for the same game, I'll typically have the game set to 800p using Steam Deck preset with no upscaling and no frame gen and on average, I'll hit around 35 frames per second. But here's the question. Can we look at these Geekbench scores and predict how the Fremont will handle games? I don't know. I'm not really a benchmark guy. Are they targeting 1080p with scores like this? If I were building a console that people would go to a store and buy in order to compete with the PlayStation and the Xbox and the Nintendo Switch, I would probably want to target 1080p or 1440p depending on the game, and we would want to keep cost as low as possible. Gabe said when they first unveiled the Steam Deck that the low launch price of $400 was a painful price to hit. The, I mean, the most fun fundamental one was great performance on your entire Steam library, right? That's the fundamental pe thing that needed, and it well, and it had to be open, and then. Uh, that that was the thing. It's just like I want to be a gamer who's used to playing, you know, PC games. I want to pick this up and says, "Oh, it all works. Yeah. It's all fast. It's all." And then price point uh, was secondary, and and painful. But uh, you know that was pretty clearly a critical aspect to it. But now. Fremont isn't a handheld, so you don't have a screen and you don't have a battery. Keeping things cooler is infin infinitely easier, so perhaps it could happen. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching. Stay rad.